Welcome to Marine Tech Talk, a podcast about how Teledyne Marine's innovative technologies are enabling scientific discoveries and commercial tasks in the world's oceans and waterways. In this fall series of podcasts, we introduce some of the winners and general entrants from the 2020 Teledyne Marine Photo Contest. Teledyne's annual photo and data contest concluded with over 80 qualified submissions that helped the company donate more than $1,200 to save the children as part of our charitable giving campaign. In this episode, we speak with Maria Valaderes Anton, an oceanography technician and glider pilot at the Aqua Pacifico Aquaculture Innovation Center at the Universidad Católica del Norte in Antofagasta, Chile. Maria submitted photos taken while deploying a slocum glider in La Herradura Bay in Coquimbo, a coastal city in northern Chile. Maria and an integrated team of scientists from other universities have been using the slocum glider to study coastal upwellings and other oceanographic processes in the waters around Chile. Now here's our guest, Maria Valaderes, with the host of Marine Tech Talk, Melissa Rossi. Welcome everybody to Marine Tech Talk. Happy to have you all here with us again. Today we are interviewing a woman who submitted a photo from Chile of actually a, a couple of photos of the Slocum Glider, both of which were quite beautiful. One was actually underwater, which is a rare sight. We don't often get to see an underwater photo of our equipment. That's much harder. And then one on the surface, but I'm going to let her talk a bit more about those uh, pictures in a minute. Today we have Maria, and I know I'm not going to get her last name right, so I'm going to let her say it herself. But she's from the U University of Catolica del Norte in Chile. And uh, Maria, welcome. Uh, hello. Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I'm Maria Valladares. I work in Coquimbo, uh, north of Chile. I'm the marine lead technician at the uh, Oceanographic Instrument Laboratory uh, at Universidad Católica del Norte and also working with Aqua Pacifico, that is a project uh, specific on working in uh, aquaculture issues. I work with different kind of instruments, with CTDs, also with ABCPs from Teledyne, with PHC sensors, and in the last two years, three years, we, we put this a new Slocum Glider G2. And we are really very happy to have this kind of equipment here in Chile because there are two or three in the whole country. There is one at our university and another one in the Universidad de Concepción in the south. And I think in the last two years, the Army also get two of the new gliders. So for the country, it's really a, a great experience to have this kind of instrument that allows measure uh, different processes, oceanographic processes in the water column in our waters. Maria, are you actually um, in your work flying the glider or are you just analyzing the data from the gliders? Yeah, my main task is to fly the glider together with the Universidad of Concepcion in the south because like we are few working with gliders, we work in teams, even we are from different universities. So they have the server in the university in the south, but we work together. Uh, we are like two or three pilots taking turns and shifts, and I fly the glider. So the pictures are, are also from mine because I was in the field working, deploying the glider and piloting them. And also, uh, in some cases, I process the data, but the basic data. And then we handle the data to other uh, scientists so they can follow up with the processing. Okay. So in the two photos that you submitted, uh, one was an underwater photo and the other one um, was at the surface. Uh, can you explain where you took those photos and what you were doing, what the gliders were doing in those in those areas? Uh, yeah, uh, the one which is in the surface, it is taking close to where I live in Coquimbo. And in that photo, we were uh, doing some tests before a deployment in an upwelling system because we are like in the west part of the U.S. We are in an upwelling system. And we are studying, we are focusing our studies in the different characteristics of the column, uh, the water column. Uh, for, and we deploy the glider before the wind comes and the, and the abuling uh, process is taking uh, place. 
and then we see how the water column develops and changes its characteristics. Our glider has temperature, salinity, oxygen, fluorescence, and turbidity, and we see, for example, the um, how the oxygen and the oxygen minimum zone that we have here in our coast change uh, its behavior in, in space and time. And the good thing that with the glider we can measure with uh, really bad um, sea weather conditions that before, because we work mainly with artisanal fishermen boats, so small boats, and with bad weather we cannot go out outside to do CTD profiles or different kind of measurements, and the glider allows us to do this, this kind of measurements. But with bad weather, the glider can still go on and work and take data. So for us, it's a really improvement to have this kind of technology here. And this was the first feature that is um, studying a welling system and how it behaves. And the second, it was taken in a Robinson Crusoe Island. That is an island that is like 600 kilometers from the coast. And it's very remote because the communication to get there is very difficult. You have to go by boat or by a small plane that goes to a small place in the island. And then you have to take another boat to get to the town. So it's really complex logistics to get there. <laughs> and to get the glider there, it was really, really hard. It, it was really hard. And then we were studying there a very unique process, that is the von Karman vortices. The uh, von Karman vortices is when a fluid um, flow uh, is disturbed by an object. And in, in this case, is, in this case, is the island and the, that has a, a, a mountain of 900 meters. Um, two different flows are produced with, with different directions of the vortices. So we wanted to know about the oceanic response uh, to this atmospheric process. Uh, for that uh, reason, we, we use the glider, we deploy the glider, and this process is mainly in a spring. So we deployed the glider before the, um, the process was taking place, place, like in September last year. And then we were measuring with the glider during the process was taking place, and we were uh, using uh, satellite images to see the development of the vortex. And then we were uh, uh, sending the glider different tracks to follow the vortex, um, the vortex formation. So yeah, that's like a summary of what we did with the glider in two different places. How long was the glider um, down under the water while you were doing that study? Uh, we used the uh, normally uh, alkaline batter batteries, so it's like 20 days. It's like the most uh, the most secure time we can use the glider, so 20, 25 days. How did you get the picture of the underwater? Did somebody go in diving with a camera, or who took that picture? No, I took it with a, I have an underwater camera, but I just take it from the boat because we work in a small boat with the artisanal fishermen and just put the, the camera under the water and took the picture. I tried to point to the glider and I, I took a lot of pictures until I get the, the glider in, in the middle of the picture. That was a good shot. <laughs> it looked like maybe you were underwater with the glider, so I wasn't sure. How long have you had your gliders now? Or how, how long have you had your glider? I think like three, four years, yeah, since I think 2017, something like that, yeah. And we have been working mainly here in the coast of Coquimbo in the welling system. And this was the, in Robinson Crusoe Island was the only place, like farther place we have been with the glider. And now the glider is in the south with our colleagues from Universidad de Concepción because they are deploying the glider soon in other, when the COVID allows to get back to the field work, to the field work, they will deploy it. We plan to deploy it this year, like two or three campaigns, but with the um, cruises, but with the um, COVID, everything changes. So we are seeing what's happening now. So with COVID, have you been able, um, obviously you've been able to do some work, but has that work been reduced because of the restrictions from uh, leaving or working together as teams? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it has been, we have a lot of plans this year to, to use the glider and offer um, other kind of field work that we have planned for, I don't know, for last year. And yeah, we couldn't do any. I think just one moving, but yeah, but we couldn't do anything because here in Chile and I think like in all the world, there are a lot of restrictions to go outside. And for example, where I live, this is the first week that we are allowed to go outside without permission. 
So yeah, it was very difficult to do any field work, and we are still we are now planning how to start next year, like in 2021, to start with new deployment. But let's see how it evolves. And also, like we work sometimes in a small island, is uh, I think much worse because they are uh, isolated. I, they don't want people to go there because uh, it would be really bad for them to get the virus in a small island without hospital and conditions. So that's also because we think we will have to work in some island, like maybe in one more year. So does the glider then allow you to do some work in remote areas because you can't travel there? You can send the glider there to gather some data that you can't physically be there to gather. Does that help? Yeah, it has helped. Well, in this case, we um, in the Robinson Crusoe Island, uh, I was there for one month to be able to recover the glider in the same place. But yeah, we we had plans in the past to send the glider for this island in more in a more remote place to the continent by themselves to measure the how the how the water column is changing from this island to the continent. But yeah, we are still planning that because like here we have few people working on that. It's a, a great challenge. And we would like to be prepared because we don't have like if, if something happens and we have to go outside to the to the sea to recover the glider, we don't have um, all the facilities or ships vessels available at the moment to to go for it to go to recover the glider. So we are doing the planning to be able to to do that and to do it with success. So we are we are planning to do that to to send it to remote places, but not now because we are still planning and organizing our space. Yeah, that makes sense. I know everybody's had um, a lot of, uh, obviously, challenges this year with COVID. Um, I think that most of the researchers that I've spoken to, um, both in this program and just um, in general, have said the same thing, that many of the plans that they had originally uh, for deploying equipment, whether it's gliders or other equipment, um, obviously has been placed on hold or been slowed significantly this year. Uh, so they haven't been able to complete all of the research work that they had hoped to complete. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, I think everybody will find it very interesting to hear about how you're using gliders, uh, where you're located. Um, and I'm hoping that you're going to keep an eye out uh, this year or next year as you're deploying again for some more photos. We run the photo contest every year. Um, and I'd also be interested in maybe having you back on the show again another time just to talk about the research work that you're doing. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much for letting me participate here. And thank you also for the contest. It was really good to see all the pictures around the world and the different uses that the equipment for Teleline are being used. It's, it's our favorite too, Maria, because honestly, all of our customers have the very best pictures because they're actually using yeah. our equipment in the field and it's nice to see how it's been used. So thank you again. I really appreciate your submission and uh, we'll talk to you soon again. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Marine Tech Talk podcast. To learn more about the work that Maria and her colleagues are doing, check out the notes for this episode where you'll find links to the Aqua Pacifico website, as well as the center's Twitter and Facebook accounts. If you have any questions or comments about this show, you can email host Melissa Rossi at marinetechtalk at teledyne.com. If you like this podcast, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're hearing this show. That way, you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again next time.